Welcome back, my friends. Perry once more here to talk to you about development. What is development? Well, development is the process of creating all those amazing apps, programs, games that you use in your daily life. If it is a software program like Facebook or QuickBooks you're doing your finances in or Angry Birds on your phone, all of those things had to be developed. And they're developed by folks known as developers. So today we're gonna to take you through the development process, some of the different tools, different development languages, different types of developers, talk about the lingo, and get you up to speed on the whole process. So when you're talking to one of these guys, you can actually know what they're, what they're saying to you. So software developers are concerned with all of the different components associated with software development process. And let me say that again, software development process, because it is a process. There's a lot to software development. And they work across multiple platforms. So software developers might work on creating code, they might work on the database, they may work on uh, the front end servers. They cover a lot of ground. And these are generally fairly smart folks that do this. Folks that love math solving problems. So they basically use different tools and they use what's called the development language. And there's lots of development languages, we'll get into that a little bit, to create the software that end users will then use potentially all around the world. So again, any sort of program you use, a developer created that, or probably more likely a team of developers created it. Um, their job is really broad. It includes researching, designing, implementing, and testing software. So being a developer is not a boring job. It's definitely a job where you're sitting in front of a computer a lot, but if you're someone who just really enjoys solving problems, has a really creative mind, becoming a developer is a great way to go. So application development. There are some terms you're gonna hear interchangeably. Programming and applications are one of them. So the term application development is often used to refer to the activity of a computer programming, which is the process of writing and maintaining source code. So source code is kind of like the master document, the master code, the source code. So any changes that get made to a program, they go in and they change the source code. Um, in a broader sense, the term application development includes all that's involved between the conception of the program or application and the design process to the final manifestation of that application slash program. So application development may include things like research, um, new development, modifications, reusing of other code to create new things and re-engineering, um, you know, definite taking lessons learned from other products and repurposing them, uh, maintaining, again, testing. There's a lot to being a developer. So clarification, and I think I've already said this, but I wanna say it again, programmer and developer, we're gonna use those interchangeably. So a developer is a programmer, programmer is a developer. Just wanna throw that out there real quick. All right, software developer. So there are several types of software developers. And this is a broad category. It covers everything from web development to video game development. So we'll talk about different types of developers as we get more into the career map, but they all fundamentally are doing a lot of the same things. They're using a software development language and set of tools to write a program or create code with a specific purpose in mind. And there's a lot of ways to get there and there's a lot of different approaches to this, but you know, just for your purposes, they're basically writing code to create software. So software developers sometimes build a product from scratch or are often asked to modify existing software. You know, a lot of software developers or end up like maintaining products or updating products. It's very common. And they need to be creative thinkers with exceptional problem solving skills. These are the guys that love working on the Rubik's Cube. I personally don't. I tried being a software developer, was not my thing. But if you can really focus and you love solving problems, being a software developer might be the right career path for you. So let's see, types of developers. Okay, there's application developers. And application developers are really focused on specifically creating applications, things like Angry Birds, um, you know, anything on your iPhone, Android, that was created by an application developer. Then you've got system developers. And system developers are really looking more at a whole holistic view. They're creating actual systems. So maybe they're programming things like operating systems 
or they're creating machine language to do specific jobs like in manufacturing. The system developers, those guys are deep. That's a deep set of skills. And generally a lot of those guys, you could probably become an application developer without having a four year or six year degree. A lot of the system developers really do have heavy backgrounds in mathematics and really can get deep, deep, deep into things like machine language. Web developers, just like it sounds. So application developers are creating apps. Web developers are really focused on the web experience, how the website works, its aesthetic. How does it look on a mobile device as opposed to in a standard browser on a screen? Um, what kind of experience is the end user having? You know, integration of video and other different user experience tools. The web developer is really there to focus on the creation of the web environment. Whether that web environment's on a phone or on a tablet or on your computer, they're looking at all those different variables to create a unified, awesome experience for the web. And then game developers. Game developers, hot, hot, hot right now. Game developers create games. And creating games, it's its own thing. It has its own development languages, its own environments. Um, they are developed for specific platforms. So, you know, you could develop a game for Xbox or PlayStation or the phone. Every single one of those has a separate environment to be developed in. So to be a game developer, you got to get pretty deep too. And you got to get really good at the platform you're developing for. You know, Microsoft has its own set of game developers in their own languages versus something like, you know, iOS for like, you know, Angry Birds versus Android. So game developers... They tend to get focused on a specific platform and it really is its own thing. Now, of these four development types, let's say you didn't want to go back to college and really dig in and you just want to sort of learn on the fly and find an entry level career and grow with, I would definitely take a look at web developer and application developer. You can become a web developer. That's probably the shortest path in is to become a web developer. And a lot of folks just jump into web development who haven't really been in, in uh, technology before. Application developer, there's a lot of online courses and we'll get into those later on during the career path. They can teach you application development online. And both of those, if you put your head down, you could probably um, get enough education and create enough of, a, of, a, of experience for yourself and perhaps a little, even a little bit of a uh, profile that folk, folks could look at your work that you could get a job within like a year or so. To become a game developer, that might take you a couple years and it might be worth going to like a specialty school like Full Sail is one of them or um, some of the different art academies have gaming programs. But you're gonna wanna get some more educational experience for game developing and definitely system developer, that's more of your um, computer information systems, heavy math kind of background. So if you're looking to jumpstart your career, I definitely would look at web dev or application development. All right, so development languages, lots and lots of development languages. Um, you got C++, which is a Microsoft thing. You got Java, Visual Basic, another Microsoft, PHP and MySQL. Those are kind of open source platforms used a lot for websites. HTML and CSS, JavaScript, those are really website generated. Flash and ActionScript, those are actually owned by Adobe and used heavily for like interactive media. Microsoft.net, of course, used for Microsoft products, creating a Microsoft um, solutions. Ruby on Rails, big for mobile. Lots of Ruby development out there. We talked a little about web development, application development. Ruby would be huge. There's a huge demand right now for Ruby developers. Microsoft XNA and Node.js. Node.js is changing things significantly in the marketplace. And I don't even think I could accurately describe it. It's a completely different way of doing computing. And I would really, I'm gonna have some uh, links in the show notes, but you should check out Node. But if you're looking to jump in, get started, and you know learn the fundamentals to start, say, becoming a web developer, I'd really look at things like Ruby and HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Those will give you the fundamentals to get the party started really, really quickly. All right, so qualities of a great software developer. And this is important because you don't want to try to squeeze yourself into this mold if this isn't who you are. And I'll be the first to admit, I tried to become a developer and I was a lousy developer. Why? Because I'm super extroverted, um, I'm ADD, I have a hard time sitting still for extended periods of time. A developer is really someone who can focus. They enjoy solving uh, puzzles. They have a natural aptitude for mathematics. 
They work well independently. They can sit down, take instructions from their project manager and get after it. They're patient. That is something I'm not particularly. A developer has to be patient. They also have to be tenacious. They have to be like, I'm not giving up until I solve this problem. Because the thing is development is, is probably two thirds science, one third art. So many developers just have a natural feel in the same way that a really talented auto mechanic kind of knows their way around specific engines almost instinctively. Developers really get to know their way around code almost instinctually. And it's something they really have to feel comfortable with and have that sort of natural puzzle solving tendencies, you know, capabilities, I should say. Um, they love to be challenged. Um, they have really high cognitive flexibility, meaning they can, you know, bend with the different problems they're, they're being given. And they can stare at a computer screen for hours. Again, another problem for me, after about 90 minutes, I'm toast. Developers, their whole world revolves around being in front of that computer, creating that code, solving those problems, and being tenacious and getting after it. And, and that means a lot of time in the chair, which again, I don't have. So I wanted to make you aware, because there are a lot of great, really lucrative six-figure opportunities for developers, but these are kind of the, some of the traits you need. So if you're a little more introverted, if you're really into solving puzzles, if you're pretty patient and you can sit in the chair for four hours at a time, this might be a great path for you. Um, I would definitely get a look at web development and app development as a good way to start if you're not looking to go back to school for you know four to six years. Uh, but if you do have these personality traits and skills, I'm telling you, there is no, it's, it's endless opportunity in the marketplace today, especially for roles like game developers and mobile application developers, mobile application developers especially, there is a huge demand for mobile development right now. So you know, creating apps for mobile devices, learning iOS, learning Android, um, which you can probably get up to speed on a year or so and, and start actually creating apps and put, add them to your prof, uh, portfolio so you can start demonstrating them. So if you have those skills, you're fired up, you really enjoy things like apps and games, I would really look at the software development path. All right, my friends, thanks so much. Um, stick around for the next program. All right, see you in a bit.